Hello, this is Scrappy Camper Sisters, and I'm doing a quick, quick tutorial. Hopefully it'll be quick. I don't know. I'm not going to speed through it. I'm not shooting this um, as a class, but I am just going to show you how to make a quick little ATC book using your fuse and one sheet of, well, actually I've used two sheets of the artist trading card pages. And um, this actually, this holds two. So I did two because we uh, are taking the Wendy class, we're taking the Wendy class, and uh, I'm sure we'll get ATCs from that thing, and then also for meeting our UK girls. So I can't wait to meet all of you UK peeps. And um, this is just something I'm making to house our ATCs. So, uh, first what you want to do is you're going to cut some chipboard down and you're going to need two pieces that are three by four inches and then one piece, which is the spine, that's going to be one by four inches. Okay, so you're going to need those. Then you're going to need a piece of paper, and I'm using the Tim Holtz correspondence paper. Uh, I know that they probably haven't gotten it over there yet, so I thought I would surprise them and, uh, you know, use the, the Tim Holtz correspondence paper. And you're going to need a sheet of that which measures for the cover eight and one quarter by five inches. Then you're going to need a piece, and you can do whichever one you want. You're going to need a piece of for the inside liner, which is seven inches by, okay, here you go, three and seven eighths. Okay, so you're, we're going to start out by doing that. And what you're going to need is you can use double double sided adhesive tape. And in this case, I'm using score tape. And what you're going to do is I'm using a half an inch and I'm just going to come around on all the edges and line it up and I'm going to uh, I would normally pick up a bone folder or whatever but you just kind of want to reinforce the stick right but I always I just have always used this I think it's faster you don't have to keep picking up stuff you can just keep it in your hand uh, you don't have to keep picking it up and putting it down and um, yeah, and then you just cut it. I remember when we were at Steampunk Soiree and <laughs> Sandra was like, how are you getting done so fast? And I'm like, cause you guys are, you guys are um, cutting it. Then today we're taking their bone folder and they were swiping over it. And all I was doing was just cutting it with this and then doing the swipe. And it's just so much faster because you get the stick and you're just using one tool. So it was pretty fast. Okay, so you just want to make sure that you have adhesive on all the sides. And then I think I'm going to use the glue. So I'm going to take this again and I'm going to go around all the edges on the inside sheet. And then along the middle. And if I feel like I have missed like a little spot, I'll just put a dab of glue. I can see that I've missed right there. And I'll just um, hit it with a little dab of glue. I might go to stick it down. Okay, maybe on that one too. So I'm gonna set that aside. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pull up the center pieces. And I just want to set that aside. I just want to, um, I'm going to just put a diagonal piece on the chipboard. So this I will. Uh, just so it'll stick down in the center because I have tape on 
I have tape on there and I'll just take this and fold it back on itself. I need excess. Doesn't have to be exact. Okay, then what I'm gonna do is line up the half inch. Right? Because I'm gonna that's gonna get folded over onto my cover. So this is just a basic book covering kind of thing. And then I'll go and I do the other side. Like so. And now, now I'm left with the center piece. I'm going to take some pieces of the score tape and I'm going to put that on the spine part. And this I want to get pretty close and tight. And again, uh, I'm just using the half inch because I don't have the inch. I need to go and get some more inch score tape. I'm handy. Would have been handy with this project because I made 12 of them. Would have been really handy. Okay. So all I'm going to do here is pull this up. And I'm just going to center this and I'm just going to eyeball it. Uh, just centering it. My measurement left you an eighth of an inch in between. So I'm just going to kind of eyeball you if you want. You can use a, a ruler or something, but just kind of eyeball it. That's just give it some give when you go to fold it. The chipboard then goes down in there. So uh, it doesn't hit chipboard on the chipboard. It just gives a, an area where the, the front chipboard can go, right? Okay, then what I'm going to do is, is take my perfect trimmer and I'm just going to come over here and I'm going to trim that off. And I need a little cutting mat and I'm going to use my blade. And I always, I just put a dot in this one. This is the corner that I use all the time. So it just makes it easier for me. That's why there is that black dot. Oh, I don't know why I did that. That was kind of dumb. Took the tape, tape off. I forgot I had to do this corner. Just, I'm just going to line that up on the chipboard. So lining up the square onto the chipboard. And then I just cut across. And last one, same thing. You line up that inner square like so, and then you cut. And of course, I don't know why, I just thought that wasn't very smart. Then I'm just gonna remove this off, the, the backing. I'm going to upload this to YouTube, but I'm not going to speed this up. Uh, we have a lot of people that like to kind of like do it along while in real time. So I'm not going to speed it up for the length of the recording. I'm just, this shouldn't take, it's not that big of a deal to make one of these. So it shouldn't be more than 40 minutes, I think. Okay. So then I'm just going to. Take my uh, bone folder and make sure I get that up along. Now the really cool thing was because this was half inch tape, it comes all the way up to the edge. So it's actually going to hold that nice along there, along the edge of the chipboard. And this, I'm using this medium weight chipboard. And I'm just going to crease those and press that down. And I'm going to do the other long side. I'm just going to come along the edge so it sticks to the edge so you get a nice fold over, fold it over cover, and then do that right here. Make sure that's stuck down. I'm just going to go in here with my bone folder and get the crease kind of going for the spine. 
This paper actually doesn't crack, so it's really nice. I'm just going to take these little, there's like a little point there sometimes, and you have to just kind of push that in, and that makes a nice corner. And I'm going to just press that down. Now see here, where they, I didn't do a very good job meeting it, but that's okay. You have the leftover corner, and this is what uh, Cesar told me. <laughs> Caesar? <laughs> And uh, he told me, save the corner, put it over top of that seam, which I thought was brilliant because I don't, even though you measure with that perfect trimmer tool, I still sometimes get cut it too close. I don't know if it slips or I'm holding my blade at an angle, maybe I'm not really sure. But then when she put the, when you put the liner on, you won't see that. So, but inevitably I always have one corner Man, am I the only one? So anyway, just thought it'd make you feel better because I'm one you know that okay so see that one doesn't meet very well either so I'm just again take the backing off I just thought that was so smart she was so smart and I'm just gonna come into this corner and lay that down right on there okay so that's done and then I'm gonna take my tape off the liner Okay, take the tape off the liner and it's okay that I overlapped it because when you pull this up, it's just going to come off of there. It's just going to sleep, it just comes up from underneath there. So that's okay. Press it down. It just comes off of there. And actually that made it roll into the corner. So I'm going to put this there and that works. Okay. So um, before I put it down, though, I want to kind of go around with my ink because I want to ink. This is white core cardstock, and I want to ink that white, white on the edge. Okay, so now I'm just going to kind of uh, eyeball center it. Just kind of want to press it, and I can see where I got that a little off, but that's all right. Okay, so once you stick that down, then you're just going to go around with your bone folder, and you're just going to press it really good. Okay, and then you're going to find where the crease is, and I'm just going to go into that crease with my bone folder very lightly, very easy, so I don't accidentally crack it, and then you're just very lightly. Oh no, that's my sister calling while I'm videotaping. I'll call her back. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay. You know, phone hasn't rang all day. Go to record. And that's what happens. But anyway, so, okay. So now you have your cover and then the next part we're going to do is we are going to do the page part and the page part is, um, really simple what you're going to do is you want to get your fuse tool this is the fuse tool by we are memory keepers and you want to have it plugged in it needs to be plugged in for 10 minutes and it gets good and hot okay so you want to put that somewhere where you're not going to actually bump it and it won't go you know in your lap or something so i'm going to set that aside uh for one minute while i pull this out in my trimmer this is they these are called trading card um, pages and you can get these anywhere in the hobby shops where uh, even at Walmart I think these are by Avery and um, let's see, I have the package actually they are this is what it looks like they're called Avery trading card pages and I know there's a little glare sorry but this is what they look like and I I, I actually got them just at Walmart okay but you can, they have bigger packets at like Hobby Lobby and that, but okay. All right. So I want to determine the tops. This is the tops. So what I'm going to do is, and it's going to be really hard to catch this on screen, but you'll see where it's already fused. The pocket's already fused. So you want to line up your trimmer so that it goes right up under where it's already fused. 
Okay, and then you just want to make a cut. So we're going to do the three together. And then we're going to do that again one more time. So then you're going to have three of these. All right, so now I've got three, three. And they are um, sealed still at all the bottoms. All the bottoms are still sealed, but all the tops are open. Then on two of them, and it doesn't really matter. Well, on this one it does because you want to get, you don't, you want to choose the ones that have the divot. These have like a little divot. I don't know if you can see that. So we want to cut that off, those two off. But you want to leave one that has the hole. Okay? Not the one that has like the hole and not the one without the divot or the one with the divot. So we're just going to cut the, the whole side off of just two. And you're just going to leave maybe like an eighth of an inch of um, an edge. Something because you're going to come back in and fuse it. And you want to fuse. I don't know if you can see. Oops. I'm holding it up to the light, not the camera. Duh. Okay. So you don't want to. You want to going to have a little edge there. All right. So now you've got. You're taking two off and leaving one on. I'm just going to come in here and take that off. So now I have two with no holes on the end and I've got one with that tab with the hole you can see that okay so now what you're going to do is with all the openings toward the top and all the seams on the bottom we're going to start with the one that has the hold edge and you're going to set that down and now here are all the tops okay those are all open then what you're going to do is on the right hand side, the hole to the left, on the right hand side, you're going to take your fuse tool. And I actually am not using the little ruler that came with it. Um, yeah, I don't really need it, but if you want to use it, you can. And I'm taking my second page, making sure that all the tops are open. And I'm just going to line up the edges. And I'm going to take my fuse tool and just, I'm going to slowly bring it along. And this one's super hot because I can see it's melting. I've had it on for a little while. But I'm going to do the top and the bottom really quick just so that it holds it so I can kind of move it around a little bit. And then I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to take it and I'm going to I'm just going to seal the two, fuse the two pages together down either side of the already, you'll see there's already like a fuse mark on there from where the, from where it was the page. So that seals that right so now we've got six pockets now I'm going to end up coming in with my third one and I'm going to line those up again top to bottom and I'm going to come in with my fuse tool and I'm just going to hit the bottom and I'm going to hit the top just to fuse it and then I'm going to come back okay so that way they don't shift right I don't have to really worry about holding them then I'm going to take my tool and I'm just again going to run down kind of slow and along that line, the fuse line that's already there and I'm going to lightly push and wheel my fuse tool along. And if you can't get it straight then you might want to use the little ruler that comes with your fuse tool, okay? Um, Alright, so that's that. I'm going to unplug that. And then you're going to end up with one long piece. Okay. So then at the end that has the holes, I have cut two strips that are three quarters by four inches. No, sorry. Three quarters by uh, three quarter by three and three quarters. So you're going to need two of those. You're going to need your score tape out again. What you're going to do is take the score tape and you're going to line it up and you're just going to line it up where that little uh, I'll show you I'll hold it up you're going to line this up okay then you're going to come in snip it off and you're going to do that on both sides but where I'm lining it up is right the hole is here okay I'm lining it up just inside the fused page the fused line of the page if you can see that better there okay then you flip it over and we're going to do the same thing on this side. And you're just going to take the score tape because that's going to allow it to flip and fold by coming on the inside of that. It'll allow it to bend. Then what you're going to do is I like to press this down against plastic. I'm going to peel the backing off. 
one side. I'm going to take the paper and I'm going to line that up just inside the fuse line. Okay. So just inside the fuse line. I keep holding up to my light. It's so weird. Inside that. Okay. Flip it over and you're going to end up doing the same thing on the other side. Now, if you want, you can add another strip of glue or uh, adhesive. I'm just going to come in here really quick because there's going to be a quarter inch, a little quarter inch. I'm just going to come in and put that down. All right. Oh, well, that wouldn't be the one that I want. Where do I put there? Okay. So that's good. And you're going to have that. Okay, then what I'm going to do is take the Tim Holtz paper punch. I'm going to take this and it fits perfectly in here. You just center it, lining it up, push it in, you line it up, and it's like actually exactly the same perfect size. And you got your two holes. Okay, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my cover and I'm going to take a pen and I'm going to come in. Probably blue is not the best color since it's blue <laughs> and I'm just going to determine where the front is that's the front I'm gonna come in here and you're gonna lay this down on top of and centered of your spine if you want to use a ruler you can I'm just gonna eyeball it doesn't have to be you know perfect but if you want it to be it can just use your ruler and I'm just gonna come in here and determine where my circles are all right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my quarter inch hole punch. And the reason why I'm using the power punch is going through chipboard. I need a quarter inch hole because uh, I'm using, I'm going to be using these big eyelets because I'm going to be putting ribbon through it. And I, I want just kind of a chunky look. And so these are uh, three quarter, I think, I believe they're three quarter of an, or half an, Sorry, I'm fishing out my ruler. Okay, here we go. And, uh, yeah, I need this. And I um, believe, well, it's actually, well, the hole itself is a quarter inch. Okay, the whole inside hole, diameter of the hole is a quarter of an inch. That's why the quarter inch power punch works. So all I'm going to do is come in here, and I'm going to line up the holes, and I'm going to just give it a punch through. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Come in here, line up the hole, and give it a good punch. Then I'm going to come in through the back side, and I'm going to push these through. And I'm going to take my crocodile, we are memory keeper crocodile, and I'm going to use the bigger setting and the, fl the biggest, flattest setting that I have, okay? So when you go to do this, you can pull out and you can flip it over. There's a big nib and then there's a small one. And I don't know if that's what they call them, but that's what I'm calling them, okay? So, and then just push it back in. So I'm using the bigger. And then on this side, I'm using the flatter one. And you do the same thing. You can spin them around. There's a pointy one, there's a small one, and there's a really small one. So I'm using the bigger one because these are pretty big, all right? I'm going to come back in on this side. On this side, I'm going to take the, the nib side and I'm going to put it down in this hole and I'm just going to give it a squeeze and I'm going to hear it do, I don't know if you heard that, but you can hear almost like a spring sound and that flattened it then. Then I'm going to come into here and I'm just going to do the same thing there and it got it. All right, so that's that. Now, the next step is going to be the binding. And what I did for that was I cut, I die cut out of grunge board a uh, hinge. I had the hinge, hinges, I think it's called, um, die, Tim Holtz die for civics. And I'm going to set this aside. And what I'm going to do is I'm using the Distress Antique Bronze. So I'm going to give that a good shake. There's like a little a bead down in there. So you're going to give it a good shake. And you're just going to come in here and I'm just going to quickly swipe it 
and uh, I'm going to do the other side. Really, I should wait, but for video purposes, I'm not going to before I do the other side. Set that aside. Okay, I'm going to set this aside, and I should have done this one with a brick mat. So I need a baby wipe. I just love this metallic paint because, uh, especially when you're using the, um, the hardware and findings guide, um, you know, it just looks metal. I mean, it's really nice. It gives it a nice shiny metal appearance. Okay, so I'm just going to set that aside somewhere in my room. Okay, then what I'm going to do is, while that's uh, drying, I'm also going to take some Distress Stain, and I'm going to, and I'm using Barn Door, which I like. I, I don't have the new one that he just came out with, um, Blueprint, the blue. Uh, so I'm using Barn Door, and I'm using Chip Sapphire, and those are the two colors that I chose to do my uh, binding with, Okay. So all I'm going to do here is I want to do three colors and I really don't want them melding into each other. So what I did was, okay, I just kind of folded it and folded it and folded it. I'm going to do alternate the colors. So I'm coming in with the red and I'm just going to do a stripe down the middle. I want it to do like red, white, and blue, like our flag and the UK flag. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to do the same thing on that side and I'm going to do same thing on this side and when I hit it with water just a little bit of water uh, because I just kind of wanted to spread just a little bit and not intensify too much and I don't want the colors mixing too much so I don't want to get it too wet but it pushes the color through to the other side okay so I don't I, it went through all all sides all right so now what I'm going to do with that is I'm just going to pick it up. I'm going to set it aside and we will let that dry. And I will come back here and wipe off my table. And then my next step is going to be, um, is going to be threading this through. Well, I have some just blank cards, which I'm just going to put in here, just some blank cards. It's supposed to be ATCs, but uh, for now, because we haven't done our swap yet, I'm just throwing some uh, two and a half by three and a half paper in here, just so that you can see how the page works. Okay. Push that in there. Push that in there. And then the last three. So this will actually hold 18 ATCs. So nine to eight, you know, you got nine and then you have two sides. Okay. So there's that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to take this piece and I am going to line up the holes. And just for purposes, I'm not waiting for that to dry. So I already had one done and I'm going to line the holes up. Now make sure that your book is up and your pages are up before you can you tell I messed up a couple of times so well this is my 13th one so all right so you're just gonna kind of push it through to the front and I'm gonna use this little thing here if I can grab it and I'm gonna do it on the other side so I'm working from the inside to the outside I'm lining up the hole putting the ribbon in the holes Pushing it through. And I'm going to then just tie a bow. Tie a knot. And then I'm going to take it and I'm going to tie the bow. And if you want it to go be fluffier, use more ribbon. Um, yeah. You can make this as big as you want. Oops. 
Okay. So there's your, that holds in your page. Now on mine, uh, I, because I did two, all I did was layer the page right on top of it. And I did the same thing. So I did them both at the same time. Okay. So, so you can see here, there's two, two pages in there. And then, so they're just laying on top of each other. That's that. All right. So see, and then what you do is you just accordion fold them and then they'll just sit in there like that. Then the next thing you want to do is you want to take, and for, per, for uh, time purposes, I went ahead and I have another one and this one's dry. So what I did was I'm using the, um, these are by Tombow and they are called, no, I'm sorry, they're, yeah, by Tombow. The craft collection, they're called hook and loop tabs. Uh, pull apart and stick fastener tabs and these things are they're acid free and they're ultra thin and they are amazing so they work great that's that packaging fastener tabs and what I did was I just cut it in half so you'll actually get two for one and then I've, um, I'm going to line the cut half at the end of my fastener okay of the hardware piece and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to peel that off, peel the backing off. So now there's adhesive there. I'm going to come in on my album. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it over to the back and approximately an inch just past uh, about an eighth of an inch in. And I just eyeballed this. Okay, so let's see. If you want exact, it lines up one and a quarter inches in. Okay, one and a quarter inches in. And just press down. Now, if you want, you can add brads to the back. I didn't. I'm going to show you how I fix that, okay? Because I haven't done it on any of mine yet. Because I'm what I'm going to use, I'm really bad about touching it to see if it's dry. <laughs> so I always do that at the end. I'm taking one of the fasteners. I'm not a sleep one. But I'm going to take one of the fasteners, and I'm just going to put it in the hole. And I'm going to open up, and I'm going to faux close this, okay? Because I'm using the Velcro on the back. And this actually, I'm going to attach with glossy accents to the front. So you're going to open it up from the back. And the reason why I did that was because I couldn't get the Velcro to fit within this. And maybe I could have die cut, cut the Velcro, but uh, yeah, I was making, I'm making 12 of these or 13 or 14 of them. And so I just did it that way. So this is actually going to be uh, adhered down with glossy accents. And I'm coming in with my little hammer, my Tim Holtz hammer. And I'm just going to give that a few beatings just to kind of, you know, mangle it. And then I'm, I guess mangling is not the right word. I'm coming in with um, a little bit of Distress Ink. And this is in Gather Twigs on the dauber here. And I'm going to just kind of hit the edges, all right, on that fastener. And now what I want to do is I'm going to take the glossy accents. Yeah, I'm going to take my glossy accents which I just had out, here it is. And I'm going to run that along the edge, uh, over the metal to there. Okay, so I've got it on the end like that. And I'm just gonna come in and I'm going to let the book kind of open up naturally. Take it and I wanna leave it in case, cause it's gonna get kind of full. So I don't wanna bring it over too tight. I wanna have, a loop there because once we start adding our um, ATCs in there, it could get a little chunky. So I want to kind of have a give to the book. And I just am going to sit here and just hold it for a few minutes. And then I can show you what, while I'm holding this and let, while it's drying, I can, uh, we won't wait for it to totally dry. But what I did was I ended up um, die cutting some of the card some of the card stock okay this is the uh, craft core but it doesn't matter you can use whatever color you want and I die cut this with the um, this is the Tim Holtz called wanted alphabet the wanted alphabet so I just die cut the letters that I needed out of that ran it through my vagabond and if you want to rough these up, you can, the best way to do, I found the best way to do little letters is to go ahead and leave them in there. And then you can kind of 
hit them with, you know, hit them with your sanding block a little bit. That way you're not fighting with the little, the little letter. All right. So if you want to do that, you rough them up while they're there, but you don't have to necessarily, but if you like that grungy look and you want to rough them up, rough them up. Okay. So that's, that's dried enough. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here with a little bit of uh, paper glue and I came up with the word, um, well, I'm doing it UK because we're going to the UK and we're doing this swap and it's the US girls that we know on Ustream are going to do a meetup with the UK girls. So what I do was I just kind of had the letters actually meet up. So I'm doing the U coming in here with the K. I'm just laying those on here like this for my title. And then I'm going to do US, right? Gonna leave up. These bottom line are tips are amazing. Okay, then I'm going to go US. And I'm going to do USA. And then what I did was I'm doing ATC because it's an ATC, ATC swap that we're doing. And I'm putting ATC. And then while that's drying, I got out these little uh, ideology vial labels and these are the, I don't know, they're not the teeny tiny ones, but it's the next page. And what I did was I just took um, a black Sharpie and I came in here and I just wrote um, swap uh, just because my handwriting's not that bad. I guess I could have stamped it, but whatever. And then I just put the little file label on there like that. I had to keep these kind of simple because I am traveling and I have so many of them. So I just kind of kept them a little on the simple side. And then what I did was I took the new uh, distress marker, the Hickory Smoke, which I'm in love with, just saying. And I just kind of went around and added a little shadow to the letters. Okay, so I just kind of went around. And I kind of wait, I wait, wanted to wait a little bit because I don't want to get glue on my marker, right? So I'm just kind of going around my letters and adding just a little shadow. And, and you know, I, you could always, if you don't, if you don't have the marker, you don't want to put a marker around it, just do it in a gray or a black and just push it over to the side behind the blue and you'll have like the little drop shadow. And then I went around the swap thing a little bit to make that pop. And there you have it. See how simple? How simple was that? Really fast. I did that in 38 minutes. And what I want to do is I'm going to then, now that I'm not going to touch this, right? And I know I'm done making it. What, I, what I'm getting out is some stickles. And I'm going to use like some kind of metal, metal, uh, stickle maybe like vintage photo would be a good color or i've got frayed burlap would work i think i like the vintage photo or maybe walnut stain would be kind of cool but i think i'm going to end up using vintage photo this one is brushed corduroy that could work too maybe brushed corduroy okay which Happy Diane is going to love that I'm using stickles on it. Of course, you know, it's only going to have a little bit of stickles on there. So this is, uh, I'm using the Distress Stickles. The, and I'm just going to see if I, ah, yeah, I got it running. Okay, I didn't think it would run out of there that fast. I haven't used them in a while. And wipe that off. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is come in here and I'm just going to put a blob or a drop. A drop and I'm gonna make it look 
like they're little metallic brads, okay? So you don't, it's faux. So you don't have to, and that'll sit in there and that is self-leveling. So it'll come down and level out. But that way you don't have to sit there and tirelessly put in, I mean, not that it's tires, tirelessly doing this, but you know, I at least want to, okay? So I'm just going to come in there and do that on all of them. And like I said, I have made like 12 or 13 of them. I'm just going to drop that in there in each little hole. And it's not going to drip through to the other side. So it's just going to level in there if you don't push hard. And you just put a drop in there just to fill the hole. That's all you need it for, okay? So that is that is my UK swap album, ATC swap album, mini album. Get out your papers and, you know, pull out your stash and uh, have a good time making this fun little mini. It went together so quick, yes? And uh, next time you see me, I will have it full and I'll do a whole show and tell of the ATCs that I received on my trip. So have a great day. Bye. This is Scrappy Camper Sisters. You can find the directions to this. I'll be putting them up on the blog this week at scrappycampersisters.blogspot.com. You can find us on Twitter. We're on Instagram. And here on Ustreams, we stream live uh, the first Saturday of every month oh, um, at 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time in the morning. And I hope you join us for a live show and come chat with us. Have a great day.